back guys so welcome back to the independent investor channel since um hylion doesn't want to put out any news uh, i will do it on their behalf i got a little bit tired of putting out content on a weekly basis uh, only to see the company which is a 1.3 billion dollar company uh, fail in most capacities to keep uh, shareholders uh, up to speed on the progress that's being made uh, at uh, Hylion Holdings, the company, uh, which is absolutely driving the stock into absolute oblivion. There's been a lot of people that uh, come to the channel and they feel like it, you know, it's, um, it's good that we uh, continue to discuss the progress and and uh, um, I do a pretty good job of, of kind of capturing the way people are feeling right now. Uh, I think we're at the tail end of coming out of kind of a dark period a little bit. So I'll just sum up the way that everybody's feeling right now uh, in Hylion for sure. So what do we know? What we know about this company is that if it came public right now, with the news that's transpired over the last 18 months, uh, the stock would probably be at least minimum $25, okay? Um, the stock has really entered into the marketplace at uh, a very unopportune time. Uh, it's gone through a global pandemic, and it has also gone through uh, a chip shortage, and I think uh, a materials shortage as well that has transcended into multiple industries. And I think they're suffering for that. Uh, I think Hylion is trying to get its footing here. I do. I think there's a lot of people that are really coming forward with some really interesting theories on the stock and where it's potentially going to go. And I think people are losing their mind right now. Again, you know, people feel like drinking some Jack Daniels, um, but they feel the same as me. They're frustrated uh, at the lack of transparency. And uh, I interview CEOs all the time on the channel. And what I hear is a common theme uh, across any publicly traded company is the inherent uh, and... Um, baked in responsibility of a company to drive shareholder value. And um, the company's brand new. Whether or not they're able to drive shareholder value into the future is, is yet to be seen. But some of the things I hear in some of the social media threads are of interest to me with regard to um, some of the presumptions uh, about Hylion and perhaps maybe holding them to a standard that they're not ready to be held to yet, um, some of which are interesting enough. And I can absolutely understand that uh, right now with the share price as recessed as it is and as oversold as it is, uh, it's easy to um, pick fun at and just go buy Tesla if that's what you want to do, right? Because Tesla has all kinds of runway and seemingly goes up every single day. Um, on a more appropriate scale and a little bit closer to home, uh, to the SPAC and the EV space uh, that's uh, closer to home, um, you could probably just sell your holdings in Hylion and just go by Nikola um, because Nikola is not a corrupt company. And, and evidently, Thomas Healy is a corrupt CEO. These are some of the things that are being thrown out. And I'm not sure if people who throw these out really realize how ridiculous they sound when they throw it out. But some of the other ones that I've heard is, uh, does the product actually work? Um, Hylion is working on about 3 million miles of road validation. This company has been around for going on about seven years, uh, came to public markets here uh, just within the last 18 months and has caught all the scrutiny that a new company should catch coming out of what has been a, a SPAC debacle. Let's be real. Uh, 2020, you could have invested in anything and made money. And this year, uh, everything that has anything to do with the SPAC market is getting absolutely annihilated. Doesn't even matter. 
I notice a distinct correlation in how the stock trades from day to day uh, to the likes of uh, Hyzon and Nikola. Now, Hyzon uh, has real trouble going on with uh, potentially cooking the numbers a little bit, uh, uh, perhaps maybe uh, overemphasizing sales numbers. Uh, and they're being investigated, so the articles read. I don't know if I put a whole lot of stock in there. Hyzon's a good company, actually. And, and I think there's a lot of piling on right now uh, in the media. I think Hylion knows exactly what they have. And how has it worked out for Hylion releasing good information up to this point? Uh, the stock market has dismissed everything thus far. Um, on on the company. I, I want to discuss a little bit about some of the misunderstandings about um, Hylion and the expectations that have somehow come to the surface about Hylion needing to somehow generate profits right now, when on the last uh, earnings call, they basically said that 2021 was going to be immaterial revenue. Okay. Um, now they may surprise to the upside, and I believe that they will. Q3, I believe they're selling hybrids right now. I don't know why the reason for silence on the lines. If you have any ideas about why that could be, you could basically come to me and say that the company's crap and um, they'll never sell another product and that they've done all this work for naught. Yeah. You, you could be right. That's a hell of a theory. You can leave your comments, absolutely, if that's the way you feel. And I typically do have those people who uh, come into the channel. And for whatever reason, when they see a highly on video, they uh, want to uh, put their opinion down, whether it be negative or positive, on where they think the stock is going to go or where the company is headed or, or holes in uh, what this company is trying to achieve. Um, I think perhaps maybe we can all come to a consensus and say that perhaps maybe if Hylion does succeed, it will be better for the environment. In other words, maybe the earth needs a solution like Hylion. I digress. A lot of what I think gets missed too is that um, a lot of the bears will point to all this emerging competition that uh, seemingly has been sleeping over the last 150 years of the trucking and transportation industry relying on one means of, uh, of, of uh, transportation, right? And that being the, the internal combustion engine uh, running on diesel fuel here, which is an ex it's extremely pollutant. There's been things through the DEF initiative to try to help clean that up. Um, uh, compressed natural gas has been put into some services uh, inadequate in a lot of capacities for those trucking industries that need additional horsepower. So when a company like Hylion comes along and really has a solution for all kinds of different applications, specifically the diesel hybrid to save on the fuel side of the house for the fleet owners that put this into service, as well as to add the additional horsepower on the CNG side, it's amazing to me how many competition, how much competition comes out of the woodworks when a company like uh, Hylion comes uh, to the forefront. And all of a sudden, all of these OEMs are, are scrambling to make this product. Now, I don't put a whole lot of stock in all that. But right now, the company's being piled on. And you be the judge on where you put merit in what you hear about uh, the potential of Hylion being run out of the building now all of a sudden that for the last 18 months they've woken all of these different companies up and all of a sudden they're scrambling to provide a solution to the marketplace um, that is uh, on par or better than what Hylion has as a solution. Yeah, I find that ironic. Let's keep that in the back of your mind. Is Hylion being too quiet right now? I believe that they are. I do. Uh, I don't have a reason for you, and I, I wish I did. I think I have some level of insight in that I've actually taken the liberty of emailing investor relations 
uh, and calling. And uh, I am a long shareholder in the company and continue to be. I'm just as bullish now as I've ever been based on the due diligence that I've done and the actual reason for why I've invested in the stock in the first place. And it all comes back to the original information that I was able to garner in the Hylian story right from the beginning all the way up until now, October 2021 putting this content out through YouTube, extreme amount of progress has been made on multiple fronts. Um, the board has been solidified. Now, through the board being solidified, it's amazing how we can take that information and turn it as a negative to say that all of a sudden, because these board members uh, have been appointed to Hylian Holdings, that all of a sudden we should start hearing about results that are garnered by nature of the board being appointed and or those connections being levered uh, and producing results on the bottom line. Who's to say that they aren't? Honestly, I, I think it's interesting enough to where we go back and forth on different sides of the argument when we're talking about Hylion. And I think sometimes uh, imaginative thoughts come up about where the company should be, um, that there should be a, a cape on Elaine Chow's back, and somehow she springboards this company into all-knowing greatness overnight. And I, I think sometimes the reality of the situation now is such that Hylion is going through product validation at this very, very stage. Um, now, the hybrid version, EX1, is available now. Do I think that it, uh, as of August 30th, is just going to be an overnight success? I don't know. I don't know that there's not sales uh, being garnered right now. We're about 35 days away from Q3 earnings coming up in November. It will be interesting to hear from Thomas Healy. Uh, on the updates of the company. Now, do you think he's not just going to deliver the Q3 report because they are have extended the silent period at Hylion, which has been interesting to me. I mean, they've done a really, really good job of using uh, public uh, open public time to share information to actually go into a silent period. I don't have a justification for it. Again, I'm open to your speculation in the comments section of this video. But uh, it's been frustrating enough to see that the floodgates have opened right up to the continued scrutiny uh, of this company, which really is void of any bad news. And I think it does take a, a touch of imagination to speculate that no news is somehow bad, okay? Now, interesting enough, Nicola has been um, extremely silent on the line here, and the stock action in Nicola, it seems as if it cannot go down. It can't. Now, at its peak, it's come off immensely down here at about $10 a share, but I typically like to look and monitor Hylion, and when Hylion gets back up above $9, $10, uh, I won't be coming out with these videos quite as frequent once we get the stock up to around the $12 mark, which is, I, I think, at least a discussion about where it could be respectably. Right now at $7 and some odd cents, just shy of $8, uh, we're, no, we're nowhere close to that. Trading at two times cash is embarrassing. It really is. Um, I think the value that has been um, disintegrated uh, over the course of the last 18 months has been just about as close to uh, as embarrassing as you can possibly be for the company. Um, and I've told them this, and it, there's no excuse for it. Have they done everything they can do to drive shareholder value? At the time of shooting this video, I think anybody could look at the stock compared to the company and say no. But is that really fair? I want you to stop and think about that for a second. If the stock was trading for $25 right now, would you say, hey, this is all great. The stock is reflecting what the company's doing. 
you guys need to understand that all too often companies are severely disconnected from their stock price. And I think this is a very, very specific indication of that very thing. I do believe that there are elements going on behind the scene of manipulation. Uh, I do believe that there is uh, some level of angst uh, within the um, uh, shipping community to just jump on board the first technology that comes along without proper validation. Validation is going to be the key here in getting these uh, uh, shippers to buy into the specific philosophy or solution that's being put forward. It is going to take that validation. There's no matter of selling that can be done on Hylian's part to be picking up the phone and selling the said product before ample validation has occurred. It's just that simple, okay? And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but since Hylion doesn't want to come out and be transparent, maybe they just don't want to deliver bad news. I don't know. Maybe they're withholding good news. I don't know. It's speculation on my part at this point. And I typically enjoy sitting on the sideline and listening to um, equal and um, um, sometimes even more absurd speculation on where this company is and what it is or is not doing. Okay. I, I have no doubt that the Hylion team behind the scenes is doing everything in their power to right this ship and to drive shareholder value in a way that is going to pay off enormously into the future. Okay. And I think it's going to take time. And I know that's something that stock owners in the company that have been owning the company this whole time do not want to hear. Okay. But I think in relative terms, there's a lot of people out there with maybe a few thousand bucks, maybe tens of thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. I really don't know. But what really amazes me is the lack of perspective and the one-sided thought in the expectation of a company like this. In other words, had you entered into the stock and it had done exactly what you had wanted it to do, and that's go to the moon, not sure what that means, uh, in the time that you dictate and in a manner that you dictate and provide you with a perfect, perfect big red bow around the neon green ticker symbol when it's time to exit said position uh, that you could tell all your buddies that uh, you made a few thousand bucks or a few $10,000 or maybe even a few hundred thousand dollars that you are an incredible investor because you did the due diligence necessary to enter into a company uh, at its very early stages and see that investment through, right? I think there's a lot of people out there that are very much ill-prepared to enter into investing in the first place. I do. I think for a lot of people out there, I think the expectations of the stock market are as such. I invest and I expect to make money. And I expect to make money in the capacity that I deem the way that I want to make money. Okay. And whenever it doesn't happen in the way that they think that it should happen, or the company should act in a way that they expect the company to act, or things don't turn out the way that they expected it to turn out. Remember, the company's 18 months old. That's it, okay? Seven years the company's been uh, incepted, been a publicly traded company here just as of late. And in the stock market community, a company that's been publicly traded for less than two years is absolutely premature, okay? This company is attempting to revolutionize an industry, okay? And your expectations of that company is to revolutionize that company when you see fit. 
Sometimes I wonder about people's motivation and when they do get involved in the stock, whether it be for a couple thousand dollars on the hook or a few $10,000 on the hook, I think it's relative. I don't really think it even matters, to be honest with you. I think there's a lot of people out there that just from the beginning had uh, no level of expectation about what they were getting in for. And when it started to get awry on it, they forgot everything that they uh, originally studied, if anything at all. Because anybody who's done due diligence on this company understands what they hold. They do. It's an amazing opportunity to get in on a company that has technology that absolutely works. I've heard people out there say that the technology does not work. I beg to differ. And I would challenge anybody out there that has the ability to find said competition uh, that can boast a thousand plus miles on the ERX and 75 miles on pure BEV power to accommodate for specifically the California market, which I've said this many, many times, I have no doubt that Hylian is going to cater to the California market and the five others as well that actually are leading the charge here to actually do what Hylian is aimed at doing. And that is doing, putting forth a solution that is better for the planet that drives uh, the um, uh, total cost of ownership over time for fleets, which that is going to be the bottom line for these companies that sit down with Hylian and are able to extrapolate the total cost of ownership. Once the dominoes start to fall and these companies can absolutely report back to Hylian and say, you told us that you could deliver X and we've been able to validate that you delivered on your promise. How do you think that's going to be received in the industry? You don't think that you're going to have people lining up to press their OEMs to make this product available to them as well? You don't think that there's going to be people that are looking to jump ahead of the Innovation Council to get their start? You don't think that the risk reward of a lot of these companies out there not to be last in line to put five to 10 Hypertruck ERX orders in the hopper with the OEM to start integrating the fleet with these solutions where it makes sense. You don't think that that's going to happen. I think there's a real disconnect from the people who have done due diligence and understand based on the information at hand. And I will concede that if the information at hand is falsified, I'll be wrong. Yep. And that's really the disconnect. That is really the impasse that we are at between the bulls and the bears at this point. The bulls are putting stock or putting investment, whether it be hundreds of dollars, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, behind the very proposals that are being put forward and the solutions that are aimed at the Hypertruck ERX long range class eight trucking that requires uh, the horsepower at the maximum. Remember what uh, direct power does. Electrified power is incredible. It provides an extreme amount of torque, an extreme amount of power. So those heaviest of loads can be actually transported uh, by these um, uh, transportation companies that demand that in specific service, okay? Furthermore, the CNG application and the solution that exists to provide the extra horsepower to provide those hybrid units that allow for that little extra oomph, the very thing that we got excited about 18 months ago when we looked at the ability of this truck to actually add more horsepower up the hill and actually charge the batteries on the way down. This is really cutting edge stuff. The ability to make a smarter truck and as the truck rolls down the road to actually uh, capture that data in the cloud and actually look to use that data to become more efficient. Right now for the last 150 years, a truck just rolled down the road 
with the expectation that they were getting cargo from point A to point B. Goods were being transported from point A to point B. Driver tendencies were not being considered. Uh, efficiencies were not being considered because there was no real way to capture those efficiencies. Now we have a way to capture those efficiencies. We have a way to actually add to the, the, the physical efficiency of the truck, but actually capture that in a way that we can sharpen the efficiency and make it even better over time. The Hylion provides those solutions for each of those. So it covers all the bases. The ability to come into existing fleets and retrofit a hybrid unit to existing trucks to allow companies to dabble in the technology that Hylion uh, brings to bear is absolutely phenomenal. The bears will say that they won't sell any. Uh, I beg to differ. I, I think industry wants to do right. I do. And I think until they're provided some sort of TCO benefit and or in some capacities, they'll need to be provided both an incentive to take on new technology and put it into a testing and validation phase for themselves, i.e. a government grant, in that these companies will look at it and say, you know what, if I'm provided this incentive, what do I have to lose if the TCO provides me the cost and fuel savings over X number of years? Basically, I get the unit for free. And these are some of the things that those out there who have done due diligence on this company understand what they hold in their portfolio, whether it be hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars on this opportunity for retail investors. I guarantee there's going to be people out there and investors who look back on this very opportunity and they wish they would have. It will be one of the many stocks that we all look at and we say, where was I? How did I not know about this? Where was the per person that was providing awareness uh, opportunities on this company? How did I not come across this opportunity and at least put a few hundred or a few thousand or maybe even a larger position into this company and feel like I'm part of a solution that is better for the planet? Yeah, it's going to be better for the freight liners, the shippers out there that have been dubbed the number one polluter on this earth, bar none, hands down. I think that's a black eye that they're tired of being dubbed with because it's the truth. And, and I think large companies out there need to be provided that incentive. Um, I need think they need to be provided a swift kick in the ass, to be honest with you, because Hylion is right there for the taking. And for whatever reason, the stock has been layered on, it has been piled on for the last few months, and especially over the last couple, it's been extremely tough. I consider this to be the dark period. I do. But I actually have a feeling that we're probably approaching a catalyst within the near to medium term that's really going to shake this stock out of its slumber. Is it going to be 750 next year? I don't know. Is it going to be 752 years down the line? I don't know. Is it going to be $7.50 five years down the line? You guys ask yourself, does it have a better chance of doubling from 750 here to 15 to 25 by the year's end? Or do you think Hylion's going out of business? Do you think they've done all this work, put together the connections that they've put together, the connections to the US government, the tailoring to the BEV credits, the, the, the um, fuel cell credits uh, that are, are coming to the forefront now by some of these states that are leading the initiative? Do you honestly think that the patents that have been filed are just going to dissolve away? Do you honestly think that Thomas Healy is a crook? Really? I'd encourage you to watch most of his interviews. The guy seems straightforward to me. He seems like a very, very young CEO that is an absolute success story. And all he's trying to do is take his solution to the marketplace to, yes, disrupt, disrupt an industry that has been polluting this earth, earth for over 100 years. 
The solution is right there. And that swift kick in the ass is all we need. And in the investing community, we consider it to be a catalyst. I do presume that we're right around the corner from said catalyst. I don't know if the stock goes much lower than it is right now. I've been saying that for a long, long time. I've been a long shareholder in this company. I've never been so bullish about the company than I was 18 months ago when I started investing in this company because of everything that has happened from the company. The stock in and of itself will absolutely, it will absolutely um, wake up when that catalyst is reached. And I think we're approaching that catalyst. Mark my word, guys, stay patient. Stay heed really what it is going to take through that product validation and the time necessary to make sure that the product is something that can be verified on the bottom line. That is where the value of this company is going to be realized. And that is going to be the very pressure that goes against the OEMs before we scale up to mass production, at least here domestically in the U.S. Guys, if you appreciate the message, you know, make sure and subscribe to the channel, share the message with anybody out there that you know is invested in, looking to take a position in, or just looking for some level of information on Hylion. I, I typically do a pretty good job of actually putting out content that speaks to the masses and actually summarizes how everybody's feeling. Hope you enjoyed the content that we have coming through the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. I do review these. I get a ton on these Highland videos. A lot of fun. Guys, take it easy. Thanks for tuning into the message. And good luck in your investing future. <laughs>